Hey guys, welcome back again to another Tech Guru video. Today we are in Adobe Illustrator CS6. I'm going to give you guys a basic rundown and a very beginner tutorial on all of the design tools and just a few basics you'll need to know to get started within Adobe Illustrator CS6. So, let's go ahead and create a new file or a new project. In order to do that, all you will need to do is go up to the top left-hand corner, click on File, and then you could click on New or New from Template. So there are multiple templates that Illustrator provides you with, and you can play around with those. But let's go ahead and click on New. Once you click on a new document, you are prompted with this screen here. You can name your document. You can go ahead and choose a profile. Will it be for print? purposes will it be for the web will it be for devices like iPads iPhones whatever it may be video and film or a flash builder project you can choose that depending on what you're needing it to be for number of artboards now an artboard is a specific area of the screen in which you will be designing on you can have multiple artboards multiple sizes of artboards and I'll do another video later on showing you how to edit and customize your artboards within your project next thing that you will see is your size it is default set to letter which is like a regular page size you can go down here and if you have a specific dimension that you need you can click and change the width and height right here the bleed will be what you know the margins from the left top bottom right whatever it may be you can click on the advanced options and change a few things here but we will not get into any of that in this tutorial go ahead and click OK and you will now be presented with a new document I've already created a few little things here for us to play with so we can test out these tools within Illustrator so let's go ahead and get started with the most basic tools here you have a selection tool and then you have a direct selection tool the selection tool is this black cursor here when you have this selected it will allow you to go ahead and grab certain objects or pictures or text on the screen and move them around so this is your basic tool just to move objects around and to get them in the correct place that you want them the next tool that you will see is your direct selection tool this is a lighter colored cursor tool here and with this tool you will be able to select specific anchor points on an object and actually drag those anchor points and edit specific details detailed elements of your artwork now with this so direct selection tool you are able to do more detailed work than you will with the selection tool because you can actually go and add anchor points as well as take specific anchor points and drag them down or up or rotate them and make specific objects now that is your selection tools there next we have the magic wand tool and the lasso tool now these specific tools are available to you to take pictures or images or graphics and actually grab specific parts of those images or graphics and remove those so I don't really have anything here we can do that with but the magic wand tool does it automatically and the lasso tool allows you to draw a selection of the screen like you see here and connect it and actually select a specific area to remove or edit within you know that object or image the next tool that we're going to look at is the pen tool this tool is very crucial to someone who wants to get to learn Adobe Illustrator if you click on the pen tool what you are able to do is this is a very wonderful tool to draw specific shapes so you can see here now I'm adding anchor points and it's kind of drawing out a you know a weird looking shape there now if I go ahead and delete that shape one of the other things you can do with the pen tool is you can click on an anchor point create another anchor point and while you're holding down you can actually create curves so you can actually create curved objects and you know go back in within your direct selection tool and drag these anchor points out and create endless endless objects and shapes and that's what makes Adobe Illustrator so great for artists and people who are graphic designers who need to create specific shapes and designs for logo and design purposes so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that shape now the next tool is very obvious and very basic you have your type tool now within the type tool you have your area type tool your type on a path where you can type on a circle or a specific line vertical type tool which allows you to type up and down you also 
also have your vertical type on a path tool so you can go in here and you can actually play with these specific tools now if you want to go ahead and drag specific tools out to use all you need to do is click and hold on the tool you want to see and then click on this little arrow here you'll see an arrow that'll flange out here click on that arrow and it will go ahead and bring that specific tool to its own box here so if you've got a lot of text that you're working with you can bring the text tools over into their own box now the next tool that we're going to look at is your line segment tool you have a bunch of options within that tool you have your arc tool which will create little arc and curved lines spiral tool which will create spiral lines rectangular grid tool which is great for creating tables and your polar grid tool so let's see what the line segment tool does you see here I've already got a line drawn out now if you want to draw a perfectly straight line you will need to hold down shift click and drag and that will make sure that whatever line you are drawing is indeed perfectly straight now once we have our line drawn out as with everything in Illustrator, we can edit that line. If we go up top here, we will see our stroke weight is set to one point. Now, if we add to the stroke weight and create about a, a 10 point line, you see here our line gets thicker. The more points we have or pixels, that will make our line thicker. Now, if you look down here, this is something that you need to become very familiar with. This first color here is your fill color, and the color behind it is your stroke color. So with lines, really it doesn't matter, but with text, you can change the fill of that text and the stroke, which is the outline color. So right now, the color of my line is red, but if I click on the stroke color, if you notice up here in the right-hand corner, my color guide comes up, and I can go in here and I can change the color of that line to be whatever shade of red or orange or whatever color that you want it to be. Okay, so go ahead and familiarize yourself with this right here is your fill color. So within this star here, what you will see is that my fill color is green. My stroke color, however, is red. If I go in and change my fill color to be a purple color, as you see here, the inside of that object or symbol becomes purple. Now, let's move on to a few more tools. The next tool you'll see here is your flare tool. And what I'm sorry, is your rectangle or shape tool. This, if you hold down, will allow you to draw rectangles, rounded rectangles, ellipses, polygons, stars, and even flares. So if I want to draw a star like you see here, I select my star tool, go on my project, my document, click and hold, and I will be creating another star. So you can create all kinds of shapes and combine them and do all sorts of things. So I'm going to delete that now. What you see next is your brush tool, your paintbrush tool, and your pencil tool. With the brush tool, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just click on the brush tool, and on your document, all you can do is click and hold, and you can draw specific shapes. As you see here, I have a dotted line brush selected. If I pull my brushes panel over here you will see that I have a number of brushes to choose from as well as if you would like you can download new brushes and I have a video on how to do that if you would like to learn how so you can click on a specific brush once you have that brush selected go in here and start drawing and as you see you have a nice brush stroke this is very easy to do and if you're an artist or a designer such a wonderful tool to draw designs and logos whatever it may be the pencil tool works Fair, pretty much the same way except that you're not you know going to have specific brush brush strokes to choose from the pencil tool you go in and you can just draw specific lines which as you see here I created a D it has specific anchor points once I have this drawn out I can select on my direct selection tool and specifically edit these specific anchor points and drag and edit those so I'm going to go ahead and delete that now now what we have next is our blob brush and our eraser tool the eraser tool is very self-explanatory it erases stuff very very easy so the blob brush I'm not going to get too much into detail on that it will allow you to create meshes and blobs of colors within your specific objects on your document Next, we have our rotate tool. This is very easy. If we have our rotate tool selected, what we can do is we can actually go in here and select an object such as this, you know, whatever it may be here, this star or this right here, and we can rotate those tools, I mean those objects. So if I have that 
selected there, I can click on my rotate tool and I can go in here and I can actually rotate that rounded rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that now. Next we have our scale tool. This is very self-explanatory as well. With the scale tool we're, we're able to take images that we have here and make them bigger. So if I select this star here and then select my scale tool, I can go here and I can actually scale it up or I can scale it down depending on what I want to do. So with the scale tool you can make objects or symbols or whatever it may be bigger or smaller. Next we have our width tool which allows you to adjust, adjust the width within objects. We have our free transform tool which will allow you to go in and edit the finer points within your your document and images. We have our shape builder tool and our perspective grid tool. Now I'm not going to get too much into these two tools but with the perspective grid tool you can actually go in and see if you're trying to create a building or a 3D shape you can go in and see all of the different perspectives where the lights coming from and that's a little more advanced so I'm going to go ahead and get out of that now. Now the next thing that I want to look at actually is a tool that is right below that. It is the gradient tool. As you see here with my rounded rectangle, I have a gradient from a light white color to a dark blue color. In order to create a gradient, what you need to do is actually go ahead and select the object, so this star here, and I want to add a gradient. So I'm going to click on my gradient tool and however you want your gradient to be. Now if I want it to go up and down, I'm going to click and hold and drag my gradient tool from the top to the bottom. Now once I do that, you can see here my gradient is automatically set to be left to right. I can actually change that. I can move my gradient around. I can rotate it. Now in order to edit your gradient, what you'll need to do is view your gradient toolbar. In order to view a specific toolbar or tool panel, you will need to go and click on Window and whatever the specific tool you're looking for, in this case it is gradient, but you see here there are a number of tools you can choose from. Click on the specific tool you want to see and up comes the gradient panel just like that. Now I can go in and I can actually edit my gradient. So if I want to change this to a specific color, I can go in here and change that color. So if I go up here and have this red color here, I can click and hold, drag the red color over to where that blue is, and now I'm going to have a red gradient instead of that blue to black gradient. So that is kind of how a basic rundown of gradients within InDesign. So it's very, very similar and very, very easy to use. Now the next tool I'm going to go over is the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool allows you to match color exactly. So if you pull an image off the web and want to have a symbol or whatever it may be to match that color exactly, what you will then need to do is select the image you want to match the color exactly. So if I want this star to be the exact color of this line, I will click on the star, I will then click on my eyedropper tool, and then I will click down on that color of that line. And now as you see, this color of my star is the exact color of that line. So the eyedropper tool allows you to match colors exactly. That's such a wonderful tool to use when trying to get things to look the way they need to and to blend well together. Next we have our blend tool. This just allows you to blend shapes and colors together. I'm not going to get too much into that. Next I'm going to show you is the symbol sprayer tool. This is a great, great tool. As you see here, I have these little paint splatters down here on the bottom left and right hand corner. What you do is click on your symbol sprayer tool, go and go to window, go to symbol, which is down here on the bottom, click on that, and then you will see your different symbols available. You can add new symbols, download new symbols, whatever it may be. Let's select this flower symbol just for the purposes of this video and go ahead and get this out of our way. Now if we start spraying that symbol, as you see here, I'm going to have flowers all over the screen. So what this is doing is it is taking an exact symbol and it is spraying it all over the screen. Now what you can do is you can create symbols yourself and make them a symbol and start painting symbols all over the document and that's very good to use when you have a shape that you want to use multiple times within a document. Okay, I'm going to go 
very quickly on these next few because they're very simple and they're not really something that you need to focus in on. Next, we have our column or graph tool. This allows you to automatically and you know go ahead and create column graphs, bar graphs, pie graphs. So I'm not going to really get into that. Next, we have our art build our artboard tool which allows you to extend make your artboard smaller delete artboards add artboards and then next we have our hand tool and our zoom tool so the hand tool allows you to go ahead and click and hold and drag so if you have a few artboards this is very good to get around your document and to maneuver that way it's very easy to see all of your document the zoom tool is very self-explanatory if you have it selected you can click on a specific part of your document and zoom in and you can also zoom out as well well you can also hit command or control pop plus sign or minus symbol so the plus sign will zoom in and the minus symbol will zoom out that's kind of the automated keys for that so that's kind of how you use your zoom tool a few other points I'm gonna get at in this tutorial is this Adobe Illustrator is a great 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 tool for designers and people who are looking into getting into graphic design and they offer so much within this specific tool to do whatever you want there are endless options within Illustrator but the last thing I want to focus on is the alignment grid the alignment grid if you see when I'm dragging this text there are actual green lines that come up if I drag this text to the right or to the left it is going to try to align that text center of my artboard if you see the green line there in the center of the artboard that means that I am centered now what also you can do is you can take specific objects like this star drag them to the center of the screen and it will try to center it with specific objects of your document so as you see here the alignment tools are crucial when trying to get documents and pieces of a document where they need to be so guys this has been a brief rundown of the design tools and a basic overview of Adobe Illustrator CS6 as a whole if you have any questions as to using Illustrator CS6 or Illustrator previous versions please put them in the comment box below do not forget to rate subscribe like comment on my videos it does help me out I will try to get to as many questions as possible if you have something you want to see with an illustrator that I haven't done in this video put a video suggestion suggestion in the comment box I will be more than happy to do it and guys as always thank you so much for watching my videos and I will see you guys next time